Hey everyone, Sean Tierney here from theautomationschool.com. And in this series of The Automation Show, I'm going to walk you through connecting up an incremental encoder to your PLC. Now we're going to cover several different PLCs over the course of the series, but uh, at the beginning of each of them, we're going to cover the details about the encoder. So you only have to watch one of the episodes to learn how to connect it up to your PLC and use it. Now, before we get going, I do want to thank our patrons over at patreon.com forward slash automation, as well as thank the latest two vendors that set us in samples. We have a uh, beautiful unified comfort panel that came in from Siemens. I want to thank them for that. They even gave us a video to put on there to run in the background. So um, just beautiful. We're, we're actually reorganizing the demo wall here. So the hardware wall. So um, you can see I've moved things around. Also want to thank the good folks over at Mitsubishi for that HMI that they sent in, which we'll use with the FX5 they sent us. So just uh, really appreciate them. And I also want to thank IFM who sent in the incremental encoder we're going to be using. Now this is the RVP510 and um, this encoder comes out of the box set up as an incremental encoder with uh, 1024 pulses per revolution. But there's some cool things about this encoder. First of all, the uh, pulses per revolution is changeable. It's programmable and you can change it to be, uh, you know, all the way up to uh, one through 10,000 pulses per revolution. So 10,000 pulses, per, that's a lot of pulses, right? So um, that said, we're leaving this at the default out of the box. I haven't changed it or programmed that this is 1024. So uh, that said, it also supports IO link. And how do you program it? Well, it has this beautiful display on the back, very similar to the temperature sensors that we uh, used in earlier episodes. And um, I love the display because as I turn it, you can see the count go up. And that's just great for when you're a YouTuber and an online instructor like myself. Um, having that visual feedback is just great. You can see I'm turning it very, very slowly here. See if we can get it up. I'll go a little faster. See if we can get up around 10, 20. Whoop, there it goes. Back up. Yep. Well, that's about as close as I can get it. So with that said, the first thing I want to cover in this show is how to wire it. Now, the book that came with it was more of like a programming book. So um, what I had to do is take a manual I found on their website and combine that information with the cables information. So here you can see the cable I'm using with this and you can see one is brown, two is white, three is blue, etc. So I have to take that information then I'll put up a page out of their manual, their RVP 510-01 manual from their website. And you can see I took the color code and I put it right on top of there. So if we look at this we can see one brown is DC positive, okay? And that's kind of common, right, with sensors. And a two is white, and that is your A signal from the encoder. Three is blue, which is ground. Again, blue is typically, you know, DC negative or ground. Um, four is black, and that's the Z pulse. And then five is gray, and that's B, and so on. So by combining those two together, I get the wiring. Now at this point, let me pull out the PLC we're going to cover in this episode, and I'll be right back. Okay, here we can see our compact logics. But before we get into that, I do want to thank Wago for sending in the power supply we put out a call to uh, vendors looking to replace the ones we bought off eBay and both Wago and Siemens sent in 10 amp power supplies. This one actually has IO link and we'll be getting to that in a future uh, show. But uh, with that said, I just wanted to thank them for uh, the donation there. Um, let's go ahead and zoom in here and take a look at the wiring. Now um, we'll start with the encoder wiring. You can see here we got the brown, which is DC plus the blue, which is DC minus the white, which is a the uh, pink, which is a minus the gray, which is B, you can see it's kind of hiding over there. And then the purple, which is B minus. Then we have Z and Z minus here, black and orange. And so I didn't have those, all those beautiful colors. But um, in any case, let me show you where that wire is into. Now I've taken the cover off to kind of show you where um, A0, now this has two counters on it or two uh, quadrature encoder inputs on this, uh, this counter module. So that's built into the cell 23. So um, you can see here we're using counter zero. So we're using A0 plus A0 minus B0 plus B0 minus Z0 plus and Z0 minus. Now I, I'm including them all, even though I'm not going to do the reset, um, but I've included them all here. Now if we zoom out a little bit, we can see, and I, I kind of left the wire a little long so I can use it with other PLCs, the same wires. We can see the encoder here 
And as I turn it, we should be able to see, maybe, I don't know how close, how close can we get to see those lights? Whoops, too close. <laughs> okay, there we go. So here we go. So as I turn this guy, you should be able to see those lights coming on and off. Okay. Z you probably won't see because that only happens one per rev, right? So, um, so we know we're wired up. We know everything's working that way. So with that said, let me go ahead and zoom out a little bit here. What we'll do now is we'll go over to the computer and write the program for that. Okay, you can see I'm in RS Logix 5000, not Studio 5000, because this uh, particular Compact Logix, it's the only Logix uh, controller that I had that I had a high-speed counter input for, and it's built in. This was donated by Rich K, great guy. Um, really appreciate the donation. And um, so that's why we're going to use version 20, because we're using an older Logix. But what we're doing here should work in the newer versions as well. We'd love to get a high-speed counter for the 5380 or for uh, the 1769, but right now, that's what we have. So let's go ahead and make a new program here. And I'm just going to call it, let's see, this is the model I have, I believe. Yes. We're going to say version 20. And I'm going to call it, uh, let's see, CPX L23E um, encoder HSC. How's that? All right. So let's go ahead and hit OK. All right. Now here we are. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come down to the I.O. here and look at the embedded HSC counter. Okay, and a couple things we have to do here. First thing is I want to go over here to input configuration. Remember, we're only using one, okay, but I'm going to leave it at two, okay. And then do we want to filter on any of these inputs? I don't, okay. I'm also not going to reset counters or uh, overcurrent latch off. I'm not going to change any of that, to be honest with you. Now I'm going to come here to counter configuration. We're using counter zero. Okay. And so what do we want to choose here? Right. Do I want an X1? Do I want an X2, X3? So pulse and internal direction pulse. I'm going to do the X1. Um, this is not a huge difference between these two, um, but you can go in and take a look at X1, X2, and X4. It's just how many counts you're going to get. Are you going to count the rising edge of A, the rising edge of A and B, the rising and falling edges of A and B. So that would be one, two, and four. And I'll actually, I'll put up a, a page from the manual here on the screen so you can kind of see where that information is and uh, what, what each of those mean. But we're going to do the um, encoder X1 for this setup. So in any case, we don't want to store or hold or preset on the rising Z. I am going to do a uh, ring counter. I'm never going to get to the max. But if it, you do a ring counter, when you get to the max, it would roll over, of course. And um, with that, is there anything else I have to do? This just seems too easy, doesn't it? Well, let's see here. Let's see. Let me go to communications. Let's see if we can do a who active. Ethernet. Well, because this is an older unit, you actually have to browse through to the back plane to find the processor. Okay and download okay since we're working on the bench we don't have to worry about what happens in the field and in mere moments we will have downloaded let's put it back in the run mode okay so let's come up here to controller tags we'll do local four input we're looking for counter zero channel count okay you can see it's at zero okay that's the current count there so let's come out here and let's see if we can't turn the encoder to make it count and we're counting up we can see the count on the encoder we see the little a and b lights going on and off but the counter is not counting why is that well, there's one other thing you have to do. We should be able to do this online. And we have to come here to local four outputs. And you see this counter zero enable? That needs to be a one. Okay. Now let's see if it's working. Whoops. Okay, let's come down here to Counter zero current count. Okay. 
I'll select the one right beneath it so we can see it here in white. And now I'll come back out here and we'll do it again. And you can see right above my mouse pointer, you can see it's counting up. Now, if I reverse direction, it should count down. If I go really fast, it should go down pretty fast. Again, I can spin it the other way and the count will go up. And with that, that's how easy it is to set up the high speed counter modules for the 1769 Compact Logics line of controllers and uh, using it with the incremental encoder. And uh, if you found that helpful, please give me a like and a sub. And um, with that said, if you know anybody looking for automation training, please send them over to theautomationschool.com. Um, I want to also thank all our patrons over at patreon.com forward slash automation. Depending on what you choose, you get free downloads, you get a free copy of the entire season of The Automation Show, and more. And I also want to throw out a big thank you to IFM, who sent us in this awesome encoder. Highly recommend it. It works great, at least here on the workbench. I, haven't, I don't have a factory right here in the house, so, um, but uh, it's been working great. This is also IO Link compatible. We'll use it again in, uh, in an IO Link uh, uh, episode of the show coming up. I want to thank Wago for the power supply. Thank uh, Siemens and Mitsubishi for the HMIs. Just really appreciate all the vendor support we've been getting during these trying times. And with that, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the show. I want to wish you all a very safe, healthy, and happy week. And until next time, my friends, peace.